Hello, I'm Victor. Thank you for watching. This video is one of three that I made. The other two of which is where I explore a very rare land feature, for Lake Michigan anyway, which where the polar vortex actually caused some of the land to actually buckle up under the heavy ice pressure, revealing some land that we've never ever seen before until this year. And it's where, you know, it, it, reveals, it revealed a long clay landscape that goes way beyond the beach. And I was pretty much inspired by that. And then I was very much inspired by the documentary of Draining the Great Lakes. A very good documentary. But there are some things that they missed. And the things that they missed were, you know, actually showing you Lake Michigan. They showed the other four Great Lakes, but they didn't, they didn't provide too much information about Lake Michigan except for the epidemic of zebra mussels that were occurring around there. So I thought, you know, with the very little resources that I had, you know, that I do a little bit of my own exploration. So in doing that, what I came across, folks, was this very rare land feature. And if you want to know more about this area that I explored, you might want to see those other two videos. You might find them very interesting. But anyway, this is where the normal beach was. You can see that right there from where the woods it starts. And then all of this is the new landscape. And you can see that little island that beaconed out right there. Well, these three rocks are from that little island. And then I, had, I found some other rocks, these of which were found stuck in the clay, which kept them preserved in their, in their original glacial form, where they still have the jagged edges, the glacial forest grooves ground into them, the striae. It's a, it's, it's a formation of which they were, when they were, that they were in when they were deposited over 10,000 years ago. So I call this the 10,000 year old group. And I call this group, say, the 200 year old group. They were already rounded and tumbled, but they were rounded and tumbled back when the lake level was a lot lower. And I'll just run by you the types. Metamorphic sandstone, Metamorphic basalts with quartz veins. Not very valuable, but again, still valuable because of where they were from. They were, they were actually, they were stuck, preserved in the clay, never disturbed by any wave action. These two, possibly gold. This one could be a piece of gold. I won't know unless I turn it in. Can we get a lot of money from that? This gold, this uh, piece of uh, pyrite, this could be a piece of pyrite. And it's very sparkly, a very beautiful specimen. I like it. Another basalt right there, green basalt. This one right here is a metamorphic basalt pulpery. It's pulperetic. This one right here is another very large nugget of pyrite that I usually don't find on a normal beach. Probably because everybody took them all years ago. This one, my favorite, a very reflective moonstone or feldsbar. And then there was a, the other, this is the other thing that I did that I did not make a video on, which is where I actually get on a boat and explore the underwater landscape since I can't drain the Great Lakes. There I go in my kayak. You can see kind of how far on I was getting. And it shows, and I took an underwater photo right here at this point, and it shows you nothing but sand, which that suggests to us that this area on Lake Michigan's west side, a very short stony beach now, used to be when the lake level was lower, it looked like Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. It had a whole lot of sand where you could set up volleyball nets and you know, have barbecues and stuff probably if you went in a time machine back in those days to travel back to that time. But of course we can't do that. And this right here is about a quarter of a mile or a half a mile out. And it was right here where I found a lot of rocks. A ver this is all, this is a virgin beach. A land that we can never explore. It was 20 feet down. Water, you know, I couldn't get in the water because it was very cold. I didn't have any diving gear. And the, and the rocks were pretty much Velcro to the ground like tennis balls. You know, the way tennis balls are on Velcro due to all the moss and zebra mussels that were growing on them. And I, but I had a really long pole, like a homemade long pole with a net attached to it. 
and it was very hard getting those rocks up. It, it took like one out of a hundred tries before I even got a rock. So it was kind of like operating a claw machine that you operate at a store where you put 50 cents in and you see if you can get a toy out of it. And, it's, and if I had 50 cents for every time I tried to do it, I would have been out of hundreds of dollars. But anyway, this, so that's what makes this rock collection very special because of the effort that it took and because of how far out I had to go just to get them. And it provided a little information to me. It revealed something. Some of the rocks that weren't covered by algae or zebra mussels, like this one, seem like they come from the current beach. They, were, they seem like they were rounded and tumbled just yesterday. That tells us that this used to be a beach, an active one too. And you can see how some of these rocks are covered by moss. This one was a, a basalt. And this rock here has jagged edges, which is kind of interesting. You can see how they have zebra mussels on them. But there you have it, folks. And I got I found a little piece of chain coral right here. I like this little guy. And then this one here is a piece of pyrite, oxidized. Or a piece of fool's gold. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, whoop de doo these are not these are real these aren't special at all. Well, folks, if you knew the effort, if you knew uh, like I knew, you would look at this collection, you would think totally different. You really gotta put things into perspective. I mean, when you explore an underwater landscape that nobody ever gets to see, it's it, you know it becomes special because these rocks are from a special place, just as the, the rocks in this in that you know that the, the ones I have over here. They come from uh, a land that we never knew where the you know that's that's always been covered up. So that's all I have for today. My name is, I'm Victor, and thank you for watching.